imagine a world where just one battle turned out differently. If you're like me, or most of the population, your mind probably went straight to war. What if the Axis powers won World War II? What if the Cold War wasn't so cold? This idea of alternate history is pretty common in all types of fiction. But what if a different kind of war had another winner? What if a console war had another winner? This is a story of just that. A story of the 2000s taking a completely different turn. Genesis done. 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis done. 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. It's free. What Nintendo. On the 20th of July 2020, a thread titled The Sega Dimension was posted to 4chan's export, a section of the website dedicated to paranormal discussion. For now, I'll just read out the thread, and then I'll interpret it later. I was hit hard by COVID and have been unemployed, stuck at home, etc. for four months now. I've taken to drinking heavily every day, bored and at a loss for finding stuff to do. I was supposed to have a tech job lined up, so I bought a high-end laptop to accommodate that, but that fell through, so... I decided to take up emulation, remembering before college when I had time for video games, played some GameCube and whatnot, remembered how I was a huge Dreamcast fan. I hadn't played since 2003. I downloaded the ROMs for Fantasy Star Online, Power Stone 2, Grandia 2. I had an overwhelming weird feeling that these games sort of don't belong, if that makes sense. Like, the Dreamcast was a system that did things and had games that just don't fit in the profile of gaming. Ever since I've been playing these ROMs, I've had vivid dreams. They seem to take place in a different dimension. This dimension is one where Sega won the rivalry against Nintendo in the 90s. It's hard to explain, but Sega is the main competitor in console gaming and its IPs are more predominant in pop culture. For example, Fantasy Star Online is a ubiquitous MMO instead of World of Warcraft. The Dreamcast has a second and third iteration in the current gen and battles against Sony for sales. Nintendo dropped out long ago and Mario has third party games. It is all seemingly innocuous but strangely disturbing. Beyond the Sega stuff, the world is way different. 9-11 never happened and Obama was never president. W. Bush lasted one term and was replaced by someone I don't know. The current president is a Republican named Chris McPherson, a rep of Maryland as far as I can tell, but this person doesn't actually exist. It seems like he makes most of the populace happy. Society is similar, but different. Covid never happened and the world is more technologically advanced. Snap back to reality! <laughs> I have been waking up in a sweat, usually with a headache, and feeling like I'm a different person. Anyone else experiencing this shit? Ask me anything, I guess. The idea that OP had visited an alternate timeline in his dreams sparked the imagination of hundreds of posters, and he quickly got responses speculating on what was going on. There are people out there who live out entire lives in other physical bodies in other worlds every single time they go to sleep. Sounds awesome. I'd love to live in that world. Lay hole detected. Expanding data horizon. It's just too much gaming, OP. I had the same weird dreams when Red Dead Redemption came out. I was playing every chance I got. When I would go to sleep, all I would dream about is the game. Every now and then, when a random person says hi, I'll respond with, Howdy! Or, Mister. I have my license to carry a firearm and I'm surprised I haven't smoked someone yet. Amazing dream. A world that you imagine is soon to follow, my friend. Do not worry. The world is simply being cleansed. We have a new age upon us. No one could really agree on anything. Then, the questions started coming in. If Sega had won the 90s console war, I was thinking that the world would have ended up much friendlier and full of wonder. How is it really, OP? It is generally weird and strangely comforting. I don't really know how to describe it from a superficial level. I'm in my 30s, so I don't know how to go. 
The world is happier with Sonic leading the way instead of Mario, but my brain feels a warmer when I experience it. Could we hear more of your thoughts on how the games themselves just don't belong? I don't know how to give much more detail than it's just a weird feeling playing them. It's a combination of graphics, music, and gameplay that hits in a way that disturbs my sense of uncanny valley. Maybe people can relate? I don't have a much better way to explain it other than thinking to myself, this isn't how games are. Now personally, I think that this is just because he's so used to living in a Nintendo world that playing modern Sega games would feel weird. Do you feel something when you look at images with the Y2K aesthetic in general? I believe it has a lot to do with the general cultural optimism and futurism, if not innocence by comparison, of the pre-9-11 era. I was bullied and had no friends around the Y2K times, so I honestly have no love for the aesthetic. However, I would agree more that there is a psychological optimism or even benevolence to the Dreamcast in its relation to a pre-9-11 world. And these are all just questions about the vague feeling of the world. As the thread went on, people got more specific about things. Was this dimension as socially woke as ours? Can't speak specifically on the wokeness, but I'll say the wound upness of society is much more relaxed. People are just generally more friendly or accepting of strangers. What were the Sonic games like? Were they as expansive as Mario 64? Like Sonic Utopia but with branching acts or zones? Sonic games are more 2D focused, like they realised Sonic was a game about being speedy. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 still exist, but the games afterward are much more of a departure. Did the arcades survive? Arcades do survive, but they are pretty specifically fighting, racing or dancing focused. Sega has a hand in a lot of this. Now I don't know about you, but the more I'm reading this thread, the more this sounds like the better world to be in, you know? I mean, arcades are still around, 9-11 didn't happen, everyone seems happy. Is it really all as it seems? Well, some more questions after this revealed to true nature. Are there any different tragedies, wars, or big world events you know of from this alternate timeline? Al-Qaeda still exists and is in the news, despite there being no 9-11. I'm not sure if the attacks on the World Trade Center were prevented or were just never planned. The news' approach to reporting terrorism is different and more micro-focused. For example, the IRA killed 11 people with a car bomb and it was reported for weeks as a worldwide tragedy. Here's something interesting. We can tell from OP's previous posts that whatever happened to make this an alternate history, the point of divergence was after the release of Fantasy Star Online, 2000. In other words, everything different about this world's history must have happened after 2000 at the earliest. This means that the IRA hadn't slowed down in their attacks, even after agreeing to a ceasefire two years ago. The Northern Ireland conflict was still ongoing in this world, more than it was in ours at least. Here are some other comments on the thread. Well, friendly reminder dear Anons, as you might have noticed, the Mario series is actually full with Masonic shit and as we see right now, there is a lot of deep state fuckery going on in this world, or timeline. We also know about CERN fucking things up. So, it might be true. We are in the Masonic devil world of Nintendo. Okay, at first I'm rolling my eyes at shit like this, but thinking about it, a lot of Sega games are focused on rebellions to the status quo. Jet Grind, Crazy Taxi, even Modern Sonic. I hate the Nintendo dimension. I bought a Dreamcast around winter of 2015, played through some Fantasy Star Online and D2? Sorry viewers, I have no idea what that game is. And I can say they have a different, almost otherworldly or mesmerizing atmosphere while playing. Sort of like they were from a different timeline. We all agree something is wrong with this timeline. 9-11 is a singularity, Dreamcast is on the other side of the event horizon. So as you can see, some people were beginning to believe that we were in a doomed timeline. In the original, correct timeline, the Dreamcast would have won over the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation. 
Sonic would win over Mario. And as one of my subscribers pointed out, this only makes sense. Shouldn't there be a more universal appeal from a fast blue hedgehog than a middle-aged plumber? This isn't the end of the story. The whole thread was archived, and part of a website was dedicated to it. I'll link that in the description. But even beyond that, more strange reports of alternate timelines started popping up on X. Even reports of a blue KFC, for example. Do you want to find out more? Well, I'm holding part 2 ransom. Like, subscribe, comment and share and I'll reveal it all. Hope you enjoyed this video. This has been George from the Ashes to Ashes podcast, signing out.